Chapter 2, Mesopotamia and the Fertile Crescent. Section 1, The Geography of Ancient Mesopotamia. Just to review, put the title at the top of the page with the section title right below it. The Land Between Two Rivers. That's the heading for this particular section of notes. Make sure you write this down because if you don't, it gets confusing when you just put the little bullet points down and you don't have a, a heading. So make sure you write that down. Okay, so we're, we're getting ready to talk about ancient Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia is a land that falls between two rivers. Now, as I've said in the last chapter, rivers are a source of life. So that's why this civilization will develop in this particular area. So you have the Tigris River that forms up here in the mountains and travels down into the Persian Gulf. And you have the Euphrates River right below it. And it will travel the same direction and they will meet with the Tigris and dump into the Persian Gulf. Today, Mesopotamia is located in what we now call the modern-day country of Iraq. So here is the Fertile Crescent that we're talking about, Mesopotamia, and this is the modern-day country of Iraq. Now, of course, Iraq has been in our history of recent times because we fought a couple wars in Iraq recently, and as it turns out, we'll probably be going back into Iraq uh, soon with all the issues with that group called ISIS. The Tigris and Euphrates rivers, like I said, were a source of life. If you didn't have the rivers, you would not have the soil that you would need to grow crops. So basically how this works is you have the rivers, and there is a flood season where the rivers flood because of the extended rain or possibly uh, melted snow in the mountains. The flood waters, when they're, well, waters, when they come down the river, they pick up soil. This is called silt. And when the flood waters happen, it goes over the banks of the river. And then after the flood season, those waters go back into its banks, and it leaves behind this silt along the floodplain. The floodplain is the flatland that borders the rivers. That makes the soil especially good for growing crops. Mesopotamia has an arid climate. Arid means hot and dry. You can kind of think of it this way. On the market today, there is a deodorant called Arid Extra Dry. Right there tells you. It keeps your armpits nice and dry instead of wet. Arid. Water is the source of life for these communities. I'll say it again. But... Waters can also be sorrowful as well because of flooding. Flooding was very unpredictable. Eventually, um, the early people of Mesopotamia will figure out a season in which flooding happens. But originally, it was unpredictable. And these floodwaters would wash away people, animals, destroy their crops, wash away their homes, because their homes are made out of mud and sticks, essentially, um, or mud and grass, well, you know, easy to wash away. So flooding, though, it, it brought the silt for the excellent soil. It also did bad things, like destroying pretty much your life. Another problem in Mesopotamia are the long-lasting droughts. Droughts were a constant danger. A drought is when there is a long period when too little rain falls. Um, so you can either have the horrible floods that will wash away your stuff, or you have these droughts where you don't have enough water to grow your crops. Both of them are very dangerous. As early as 6000 BC, Mesopotamian farmers began to control the water supply. They used dikes, meaning walls, and canals, meaning ditches, to carry water to their crops and dry land. This whole system is called irrigation. Now, if you're looking at this picture, this main ditch right here is delivering water to the smaller arms or ditches over here, these smaller canals, to water their crops. Now, this large ditch right here is coming from a main water source of some way. So it's coming from the river, and you can use the walls or the dikes to block off the water when you don't want as much water out into your fields. That's what the dikes are for. Okay, you do not have to write the slide. This is just a model to show you how irrigation works. Um, if you look at number one, there are gates right here. So you can see the gates that controlled how much water flowed from the river. Those are the dikes. 
uh, the main canal, which is this, uh, is led from the river, and there's a slope there so that the water can flow through it, and um, it will get, and there's a little wall right here, so uh, number two is the, or number three is the median branch right here, but these are walls right here to help control the, the water, and then the waters are let in, and then they will fall into these smaller uh, feeder canals to get to the crops. They built houses out of mud and reeds. Now what they're going to do with these reeds is they're going to kind of bundle them together to form these kind of pillars and they will uh, insert them into holes in the ground. And you can bend the pillars over and bind them together and form a roof from that. Then they plastered the walls with mud to strengthen them. So basically what we have here is a house made out of mud and reeds. It's kind of a strong plant uh, to build their houses. Walls were built around towns and villages for protection. And the Mesopotamians traded items that they had in surplus, there's that word again, surplus, for other go goods that they needed, like stone, wood, copper, and tin. Because you're kind of living in this kind of desert, desert uh, area. And it's kind of lacking some resources. So you need things. So trade was important. So you would take what you had a surplus of, and you would trade it for something that um, you needed. That's the end of section one.